Before I talk about the principles of asymmetric key cryptography, let's review symmetric key cryptography. This is Alice, and this is Bob. To send a secret message to Bob using symmetric key cryptography, Alice needs three things. Firstly, there's the plain text message that she wants to encrypt. Secondly, she needs a set of steps for scrambling the message so it can't be read by someone other than Bob. A set of steps to follow is called an algorithm. A set of steps specifically for scrambling a message is called a cipher. She could follow these steps with pen and paper if they're simple enough, or she could use a computer program to do it if it's more complicated. Finally, she needs a secret key, something that only Alice and Bob should know. When the plain text and the secret key are processed by the cipher, cipher text is generated, a copy of which can be sent to Bob over the internet. Bob needs to convert the cipher text back into plain text so he can read it. To do this, he needs three things. He needs the cipher text, well, he's got that now. He also needs to know the method that was used to generate the cipher text so he can perform the same steps in reverse and he needs to know the secret key. When the ciphertext is processed along with the key, the plain text is recreated. One by one, Bob, or Bob's computer, undoes each step that Alice did, but in the reverse order. The process used to decrypt the ciphertext is the opposite of the process that was used to encrypt it. By definition, the word symmetry means balance an exact correspondence between different things. That's why this is called symmetric key cryptography. Decryption uses the same key as encryption and the same process in reverse. Unfortunately, there are plenty of hackers and other criminals who would very much like to know what Alice and Bob are saying to each other, not to mention some governments and other secret organisations, in the name of national security, of course. It doesn't matter if other people have managed to intercept the ciphertext or have taken a copy of it. And it doesn't even matter if they know how the cipher works. What makes this communication safe is the secret key. The key could be a group of numbers and letters or a sequence of binary digits. As long as the key is big enough, it would take the most powerful supercomputer in the world thousands of years to find the key simply by trying all of the possibilities. And if the encryption process is clever enough, it'll be near enough impossible for anybody to work out what the key was by analysing the ciphertext. So, Alice and Bob can happily carry on exchanging secret messages in private, secure in the knowledge that nobody else can see what they're saying. But there's a fundamental problem with symmetric key cryptography. This is Albert and Sheila. They want to start sending each other secret messages too, but they've never done it before. What's more, Albert lives in England and Sheila lives in Australia. Using email, for example, they can agree on a cipher, but somehow they also need to agree upon a secret key. Either one of them could come up with a key and send it to the other person, but don't forget, Criminals and other nosy people are watching. Albert could encrypt the key, but Sheila won't be able to decrypt it. And Australia is too far away to deliver it in person. What a dilemma! Fortunately, these three guys invented a solution. Their names are Ron Rivest, Adi Shamir and Leonard Edelman. Their basic idea was really simple and very elegant. They suggested using two separate keys, one to encrypt the data and a different key to decrypt it. And let's be clear, for a particular encryption key, there is only one decryption key that will work. Since the keys are different, they are known as asymmetric keys. Rivest, Shamir and Edelman came up with a way to generate matching pairs of keys and they worked out the algorithms needed to encrypt and decrypt the data. The mathematics behind this crypto system is very clever, 
So much so that they won the Turing Award for their work. This is the highest prize you can possibly win in computer science. They also gave their names to this crypto system. It's called the RSA algorithm. So let's return to Albert and Sheila and see how they can make use of the RSA algorithm. Albert tells Sheila that he wants to send her a secret message. This could be sent as plain text. Sheila uses a computer program to generate an asymmetric pair of keys, an encryption key and a decryption key. Sheila sends Albert a copy of the encryption key. She keeps a hold of the decryption key. They needn't worry about someone else getting a hold of Albert's encryption key. In fact, anyone can have a copy of it if they want. It doesn't matter. It's public knowledge. Albert uses his copy of the encryption key to encrypt his message, and he sends it to Sheila. Of course, it doesn't matter if other people see the ciphertext. There's only one person in the world who can decrypt the message, and it's Sheila because only Sheila has the decryption key. It never left her computer. Thanks to these three guys, Albert and Sheila have managed to send the secret message without having to get together first and without having to risk their privacy. If Sheila wants to reply in secret, she could ask Albert to make an asymmetric pair of keys and send her the encryption key. Then they can chat in peace. RSA does have one drawback. It's not great for sending really big messages, but that's okay because Albert and Sheila can use asymmetric keys to exchange a symmetric key. Then they can carry on in the same way as Bob and Alice. In summary, symmetric key cryptography uses the same key for encryption and decryption. The decryption process is essentially the opposite of the encryption process. Asymmetric key cryptography, on the other hand, uses one key for encryption and a different but related key for decryption. A pair of related asymmetric keys are often referred to as the public key and the private key because it doesn't matter who gets a copy of the encryption key as long as the decryption key stays private. Asymmetric key cryptography is only really good for small messages, so typically asymmetric key cryptography is used to exchange a symmetric key. Asymmetric key cryptography is at the heart of secure internet communication. When you visit an online shop or an online bank, asymmetric key cryptography is going on behind the scenes to ensure your privacy. Your web browser takes care of everything for you. In fact, you can view the public key that your browser is using when you connect to a secure website, like this.